In this video, sharding versus partitioning. While these two concepts are related, they are not the same, and understanding the difference can make a huge impact when designing scalable systems. So let's break down what sharding and partitioning are, how they differ, and also where they overlap. So number one, what is partitioning? Before we talk about sharding, let's start with the concept of partitioning. In simple terms, partitioning is the process of dividing a large data set into smaller, more manageable chunks. This can apply to databases or file systems where you split your data across different physical or logical locations. For example, imagine you have a massive customer database. Instead of storing all your data in one huge table, you can partition that data based on different criteria. You could divide customers by geographic location, account status, or even time ranges. Each partition contains a portion of the total data set, but together they make up the whole database. So three key points about partitioning here. One is the logical separation. So the data is split logically, but the partitions could all reside on the same server or across multiple servers. Number two is improved query efficiency. So by organizing your data in partitions, your queries can be faster. For example, if you want to query data from a specific region, the system can focus only on that partition instead of scanning the entire data set. The number three, the types of partitioning. So some common types include range partitioning, list partitioning, and hash partitioning. Now let's talk about sharding. What is sharding? While partitioning is about dividing data within a single system, sharding takes this concept one step further. In sharding, the data is not only divided, but it's also distributed across multiple servers or nodes. So each shard operates independently with its own database and resources. Think of it this way. Sharding is like partitioning with a twist. It's meant to handle extreme scalability. When your data grows beyond what a single server can handle, you use sharding to split the load across multiple servers. So three key points here about sharding. One distributed system. Each shard is its own independent database residing on different servers. Two, improve scalability. By distributing the data across multiple servers, sharding helps scale the system horizontally, allowing it to handle more users and more data. And then three is fault tolerance. If one shard goes down, the others can continue operating, improving the overall resilience of the system. So sharding versus partitioning, key differences. Let's talk about some key differences between the two. While they both deal with splitting up data, their purposes and execution are quite different. So number one is the scale. Partitioning typically deals with breaking up data into chunks within a single database or system, whereas sharding is about distributing data across multiple servers or systems to handle higher loads and traffic. Number two, system architecture. So partitioning happens within the same server database. All the partitions are part of the same system. Whereas sharding requires multiple databases or servers with each shard functioning independently. The number three is the use case. So partitioning is often used to optimize performance in smaller scale databases where you want faster queries and better organization of data. Sharding is used for massive data sets and large scale distribution systems where no single server can handle the load. Let's, let's also talk about complexity. So partitioning is easier to manage since all the partitions are part of the same system. Sharding introduces more complexity because you need to manage multiple databases and you'll have to deal with issues like cross shard queries and consistency. So when should you use partitioning and when should you go for sharding? You should use partitioning when your database, when your data set is large but still manageable by a single server. 
When you want to improve query performance by narrowing down the scope of your searches, or if you have a clear criteria for organizing data, like dividing it by regions or time. And then when to use sharding, well, you'll want to use sharding when your data set is too large for a single server to handle, when you need to scale your systems across multiple servers to handle more users or traffic, or if your application needs to be highly available with fault tolerance spread across multiple independent systems. Now let's talk about some challenges, some pros and cons of each approach. So with partitioning, there's one challenge called partition pruning. So queries might still need to access multiple partitions, which can slow things down if the data is not well distributed. Another challenge is repartitioning. So over time, you may need to adjust your partitioning scheme, which can be a resource intensive process. Now let's talk about sharding challenges. So one is cross shard queries. These are queries that need to access data across multiple shards, and that can be pretty slow and pretty complex. There's also data rebalancing. So you may need to move data between shards as your system grows, which can be difficult and lead to downtime if not done correctly. Another challenge is consistency. You know, in distributed systems, maintaining data consistency across shards can be a challenge, especially when dealing with real-time updates. To wrap it up, partitioning and sharding are both powerful techniques for handling large data sets, but they serve different purposes. So partitioning is best for optimizing performance within a single system, and sharding is the go-to solution when you need to scale across multiple systems and distribute the load. Understanding the difference between these two will help you make the right architectural decisions as your system grows. If you found this breakdown helpful, Give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more tech deep dives. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.